Let me begin by congratulating and thanking you and your team for all of the hard work you have done throughout the math curriculum stabilization process. There is no way we could be where we are without all of you and your dedication to each other and more importantly, our students. So for that, thank you. That said, our work still continues. If you are watching this video, then it means you and your team are ready to begin your learning plans. Woohoo! The goal of this video is to provide clarity for you and your teams as you begin writing the learning plans for each of your units. In this video, we will talk about the intent of a learning plan, and then through an example, we will talk about the pieces or components that will be inclusive of all of our learning plans. So, let's dive in. Here we go! Let's remind ourselves of the message Linda shared with us on the morning of June 13th, that our guaranteed and viable curriculum has shifted from between stage two and three at the unit level to below stage three at the unit level, which means now our guaranteed and viable curriculum is all three stages of curriculum and all three stages of the unit level. And at that stage three at the unit level lies the learning plan. So if the learning plan is now part of our guaranteed and viable curriculum, let's make sure we are clear on its intent and its components. So what is the intent then of a learning plan? Well, first and foremost, a learning plan is intended to be your team's roadmap, or perhaps even better analogy here would be an itinerary for the unit. So similar to a multi-day itinerary like this 11-day Southern Caribbean cruise, and wouldn't that be nice? Yeah, here you can easily see what you'll be doing on day one, day two, day six, day seven, and so on. Our learning plans should guide our teaching in a similar fashion. Second, learning plans are intended to be easy to navigate with all the necessary information linked and readily accessible. Third, the learning plan should hold true to the intent of the everyday math statement that we are using everyday math as our primary resource. And for many of our units, their learning plans will heavily reflect this. However, the learning plan can and will at times also show any supplemental lessons that have been collectively agreed upon by the grade level team. Fourth, now that the learning plan is part of our guaranteed and viable curriculum, the intention would be that the learning plan guarantees equity in experiences for all our students. So, if the learning plan shows we are heading to the Southern Caribbean Islands, then all of our students across all buildings are going to be stopping at the same islands, as you see in the itinerary. It's not equitable for one class of students to go to Jamaica and another class of students to go to St. Lucia. We want the same rich experiences for all of our students. Lastly, the intention of the learning plan still honors the art of teaching at the lesson level. Yes, you are following the same itinerary and stopping at the same islands. However, what you do when you step off the boat is up to you. You can experience that island as you see best fit for your students. But all students will say at least that they visited the same islands. So if those are the intentions of the learning plan, then what are the components that will comprise all of these learning plans? Well, here's one snapshot of a fourth grade mock learning plan. It is unit three on fractions and decimals. The first thing you will see at the top of the learning plan is the approximate number of days for the unit. So just like in our itinerary for the Southern Caribbean cruise, we knew exactly how many days the trip was going to be, 11 days. And to start off our learning plans, teachers should know approximately how many days this unit will take. Keeping in mind the word approximate, as we know, we should never set in stone the exact amount of days for any lesson nor any unit, as that would not be responsive to our learners. However, we can for sure have a best guess, and that should be captured at the onset of the learning plan, as you see here. So this unit will be approximately 25 days, as you see. This includes from launch to end of unit assessments, including the performance task, if there is, in fact, a performance task for that unit. If you take 28 days for the unit, it's all good. If you go 24 days, it's all good. Now, 
if someone happens to be finished in 10 days or is taking their good old time and 40 days later they're still not in Barbados yet, there's probably going to be some conversation. A second piece of the learning plan, just like on the cruise itinerary, we knew the exact path or progression that our boat was going to be taking and where we would be on day one, day three, and day 11. Similarly, in our learning plans, that path of progression that our students are going to be taking should be very clear as well. For starters, every cruise has a departure port at which they launch the boat from. Similarly, every unit will have a launch. And you see in the example here on the screen, the launch is linked. The launch is purposely linked to provide clarity for all teachers, both new and veteran. This again ensures equity for all students in building excitement, background knowledge, and vocabulary. From there, you will see the remainder of the itinerary for the unit. Lesson 3-2, Lesson 3-3, Lesson 3-4, Lesson 3-1, etc. The lesson number and titles can come straight from the manual. Notice after each lesson, there is an approximate day, just like the unit length. So this again does not mean you have to do the lesson in one day. If your kiddos need another half day or full day, then by all means, you can do that. A third piece under the lesson title, it is important to write a brief summary of what the students will be doing in that lesson. This again can come straight from the manual. A fourth piece. One important component of planning is anticipating the likely stumbling blocks of our students and some possible suggestions to help them overcome those stumbling blocks. So another critical piece in the learning plan here is including the common misconceptions. This again can come straight from the manual or certainly your team can wordsmith the best way you see fit. A fifth piece to our learning plans honors the work on our common assessments. You will see throughout this learning plan the embedded common assessments and the timing in which they will occur within the unit. If it is a common assessment that is not in the manual, then it must be linked, as shown in some of the examples here. Lastly, as every great cruise comes to an end, our learning plans will end with the common unit assessment and performance task. Notice they're both linked here. If there is, however, no performance task, because it was perhaps paired with another unit, then indicate that on your learning plan, like, again, this example shows. So this brings us to the end of our video. As your team gets ready to begin your own journey of crafting the learning plans, keep your sights set on the North Star, our students. We know already that our students are in for a very memorable math journey throughout their time here with us at Mechanicsburg. Thank you for taking the time to collaborate and create joyful learning that celebrates and also encourages our students to become the best mathematicians they can be. You guys are amazing.